If you're Googling when to apply to PhD program, you're probably stressed out, you're probably planning, and you're probably wondering if you're not already behind. But here's the truth. Applying to PhD programs is much more than deadlines. It's also about timing. And if you don't know that, you're probably making things harder for yourself than they need to be. In this video, I'll break down step by step what timing really means, and I'll be busting a few myths along the way. So let's go. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am Philippe Barr. I am a former professor and a graduate school admissions consultant. If you're new to this channel, this is a channel where I give you real talk about applying to graduate school. I give you tips that you can find on program websites or on Reddit and that actually make a difference between getting rejected and getting admitted. So if that's what you need, feel free to like or subscribe. I post on a weekly basis on anything related to applying to grad school and how to thrive as a graduate student. If you are applying to a PhD program, you probably know that deadlines are around December 1st up to January 15. And a lot of people focus on that date. They circle it on their calendar and they use this date as their North Star. But the reality is that the strongest PhD applications I have seen, in my opinion, are pretty much focused on timing. And timing is a bit more than just a deadline. It's actually a strategy. This is how you plan to get your recommenders, ordering your transcripts online and refining your statement of purpose. I've worked with many people in the past and I must tell you most of the people who focus on deadlines are usually stressed. They usually upload at the last minute. They usually scramble to get recommenders and to get their transcripts while people who actually focus on timing actually go through the application process much calmer, much more organized and much more focused. And that's what I'm going to walk you through step by step. How to build your timeline backward so that the deadline isn't scary and looming over you and it just becomes the day where you submit your application in full confidence. Before we even start, let's bust the first myth. And I see a time and time again, a lot of people focusing on the idea that they need to submit their applications prior to the deadline. If you're applying to PhD programs in the US, you probably know that the deadlines are pretty hard. I mentioned them. They're usually December 1st, December 15th, January 1st. Sometimes if you're lucky, January 15th. And I see a lot of people thinking that if they apply in October or November, they might increase their chances of getting admitted. And that is a total myth. It is not true. If you are applying to a PhD program where the deadline is hard, meaning that it is not written anywhere that that admissions are rolling, there is no need for you to apply before the deadline. Admissions committees will wait until they've received all their applications to start looking at everyone. It is from a practical point of view much easier for them because not only do they do everything at once, but they are also in a position to compare candidates with each other. And this is why it is completely pointless for you to apply to a PhD program in November if the deadline is January. However, if you are applying to PhD programs in the UK, for example, and sometimes in Canada or somewhere else in Europe, you might see that they have rolling deadlines. So you are invited to apply throughout the year and they usually provide a hard deadline, which is the end of the admission cycle. If you are in this situation, it might be a good idea since rolling admissions means that people are going to start accepting people as they come. It might be a good idea for you to apply earlier. But that being said, said the overall goal of applying to a PhD program is for you to have the best application possible. So if you are in this situation, I wouldn't necessarily rush it and it would be a really bad idea for you to apply earlier all this to send an application that is just so-so. So really focus on sending the best application possible. Okay, so now let's start building things backwards. So if you are 120 days or even more before the deadline prior to December 1st, 15th or January 1st, the first thing that you should have ready is your CV and your research interests. Why? Because your CV and your research interests are two elements that gonna pretty much act as a backbone 
backbone of your application because you will use your CV and your research interests as you start approaching recommenders, for example, as you start conducting research in terms of coming up with your best list of programs. And also they become very useful in building your statement of purpose. In my opinion, if you wait until October to do this, you'll be reacting instead of planning. And that might really impact the quality of your application. And by the way, if this is you right now, you're rushing, you know that there are a lot of things for you to do and it becomes really overwhelming. I have the perfect tool for you. I have left a link in the description box of this video to a PhD application timeline for 2025, 2026 that I came up with that basically breaks down everything that needs to be done and when for you to go through the application process without too much stress. So if this is something that interests you, please feel free to check it out. The good thing about it is that it is completely free. So don't hesitate to download it. Okay, now let's talk if you are 90 days out. So that is September if you're applying for December. So there's three things that should be done by then. Your CV should be pretty much complete, 90% complete. You should have a strong draft already or a strong outline of your statement of purpose and your recommender should be confirmed and locked down. Why? Because if you wait a little later, you'll be contacting your recommenders and they'll be already in November in rush mode for professors. This is a time where they're really busy. They receive a lot of requests for letters of recommendation and you risk getting a letter that's just gonna be so-so. It's important for your recommenders to be already contacted for you to have an exchange with them and to have built a bit of a relationship with them to make sure that you have the best letters possible. The statement of purpose is the same thing. It's important to think that your statement of purpose should not be a rush job that is produced in early December. This is something that admissions committees will pick up on for sure. And that could really drastically impact your application negatively. In other words, 90 days before the deadline is the time where you stop scrambling and you start shaping. From here on, it's about refinement and not rescue. Okay, time to bust another myth. A lot of people think that they can work on their statement of purpose a few days before deadlines. And this is completely wrong. Based on my experience working with PhD applicants, I would say that 70% of the people I work with have already applied prior year and did not get in. And I could tell you that 90% of people who got rejected because they rushed their statement of purpose. So so it's really important for you to plan your time so you come up with the best essay possible. As I've mentioned in other videos time and time again, this is the first thing that admissions committees look at. You don't want to come up with something that's going to look rushed. Please don't let that be you. So now your 60 days is out. It's probably October and you're wondering what should I be doing? Well, this is when you move from sharpening to refinement. And the first thing that you should start refining in October is going to be your statement of purpose. As you've probably seen in other videos, videos of mine, the statement of purpose should be tailored for each school. And it's really important that it is done because if it's not, it's going to be read as a template and that's not going to work for you. The second thing that you should also focus on is getting your transcripts. It seems like something that is quite easy to do, but sometimes it can take a few weeks before it gets sent to the school, etc, etc. So I always encourage people to start reaching out to registrar's office to make sure that they receive their transcripts transcripts on time. It's also important to lock your writing sample if it is part of the application. A lot of PhD programs will require a writing sample and if you want to do edits, if you want to toy a little with it so that it really aligns with your target program, this is the time to do it. Finally, something that I see tons of people forgetting, especially when I talk about the statement of purpose, is seeking input from an outside pair of eyes. I see too many applicants keeping their statement of purpose so close to their heart until the last minute. And in my opinion, this is the worst way to proceed. So in October, it would be a good time for you to seek out somebody to take a look at your statement of purpose. There's nothing like somebody who has never read your text to point gaps in your demonstration. And they might be also able to provide you with insight on what pieces are missing, what parts of your statement of purpose are not clear. So this is a good time for you to identify somebody who has authority in the field to take a look at your statement of purpose. And believe me, you won't regret it. This is really what makes the distinction, in my opinion, between a statement of purpose that's just okay and a statement of purpose that gets you in and that gets you money. So now you're 30 days out. It's November. What should you be doing? Well, you're done refining.
happening. So it is time for you to start polishing. So this is when you polish your statement of purpose based on the feedback you got. And this is also when you start cleaning up the formatting. And this is also when you need to do something that's going to be really important for you. Believe me, you'll thank me for this. This is when you start populating the portals for each application. It is very time consuming to do, first of all, because although they require a CV or a resume, they usually ask you to fill this information by hand. So just multiply this by six or seven programs. It's super time consuming and especially boring. So this is one of the reasons why you should start populating this portal at this moment in time. It's also when you'll be entering the names of your recommenders. So they will receive the prompts to upload their letters of recommendation. You will include their email, etc., etc. And most of all, portals are also surprising in many ways. I've seen tons of PhD application websites that pretty much list that you need to send a statement of purpose, a CV, letters, etc., etc. And when you come to the portal, you find out that they need a personal statement, they need a diversity statement, there are extra questions, etc., etc. So in my opinion, November is the best time for you to start looking at these portals because they require a lot more work and you definitely don't want to get a surprise at the last minute and finding yourself in the position of writing entire essays a few hours before deadlines. So now it's rush time, 10 days before deadlines. What should you be doing? Well, this is the time when you start uploading the stuff in the portal. They might require a PDF format. It might become very complicated if you wrote it on a Word document to upload it in PDF. Sometimes the formatting is not the same. I've seen a lot of people pulling their hair at the last minute. So you should start uploading all your documents during these 10 days to make sure that everything is set before you press send. Believe me, submitting five to 10 days before deadline isn't all about strategy. It's mainly about peace of mind. Okay, one last myth. A lot of people rely on the fact that they have until 11.59 before the deadline to upload their information. Believe me, this is the worst decision for you to take. I've seen so many times some of these portals having a glitch at the last minute and seeing people not being able to send their documents on time. So make sure that you have a lot of time in front of you so that you can really submit not only the best application, but that you can actually press send and make sure that it is received on time by your target programs. Well, that's all folks. I hope this video was helpful to you in some kind of way. If it helped you getting less stressed about the process, feel free to like or subscribe. As I said, I post videos on a weekly basis and it will also help other people who are in your situation to find this video. If you are in the process right now of applying to PhD programs and you want to share your experience or you have questions, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. I read everything and I try to answer all questions I get. Again, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.